Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the new episode where we will unlock the secrets to success in the world of project management. Today, I've got some super special for you. 11 steps to successful Scrum implementation. So if you are diving into the world of Scrum or if you are a seasoned pro looking to up your game, you are in the right place. So buckle up and let's dive right in. Now, here are a brief guide on how to initiate a Scrum project. And this, this is description for the process in the broad strokes. But it should be sufficient to get you started. Okay, now first step is select the product owner. And this is the person with a vision of what you will do, create or achieve. They consider value risks, what can be done and what needs to be done in priority. Okay. The step number two is form the T. So who will be the people doing the work? The T must possess all the skills necessary to realize that product owner's vision and turn it into a reality. Teams should be small with the general rule of three to nine members. Step number three, choose the scrum master. This person guides the rest of the Scrum team throughout the Scrum framework, helping them eliminate anything that slows them down. Step number four is to create the backlog. And this is the high level list of everything that needs to be done or create to turn the vision into a reality. This list evolves during the project's life cycle, serving as a roadmap. The backlog is a unique, definitive view of everything that the team could ever do in priority order okay and there is only one backlog and the product owner is responsible for prioritizing it across the spectrum the product owner should consult with all the stakeholders and the team to ensure that the production of what people want and what can be produced okay step number five refine and estimate the backlog The key is to have the people who will actually perform the task on the backlog to estimate how much effort each task requires. The team needs to analyze each backlog item and determine if it can be done. Does it have enough information to complete it? Is it small enough to be estimated? Is there a definition of done? For example, this is an agreement on the standards that must be met for something to be called done. Okay? Does it create a visible value? Each item must be such that it can be presented, demonstrated, and ideally delivered. So don't estimate the priority list in hours, as people are not good at it. Estimate by relative size, like small, medium, or large. Or even better, use the Fibonacci sequence to estimate the value of each item. One, two, three. 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc. Okay? Now, step number six, have a sprint planning session. And this is the first Scrum meeting, okay? So the Scrum team, Scrum master and the product owner sits down to plan the sprint. Sprints are always of the certain duration, typically less than a month. And most people not now work in the sprints of uh, two weeks. The team looks at the purpose of the product backlog and estimates how much it can be achieved in this sprint. If the team has already worked on several sprints, they should consider the number of points they complete in the last sprint. This number is known as the team's velocity. And the Scrum Master and the team should aim to increase this number each sprint. And this is another opportunity for the team and the product owner to ensure everyone understands how this item contributes to realizing the vision. And also during this meeting, everyone should agree on the sprint goals. For example, what everyone wants to achieve in this sprint. And one of the pillars of Scrum is the following concept. Once the team decides what it can do in one sprint, that's final. It cannot be changed or exceeded. The team must be able to work independently during the sprint and complete what it it has estimated it can. 
Okay. Step number seven, make work visible. So the, the most common way to do this in Scrum is to create a Scrum board with three columns to do in progress and done. It could be done with a sticky note to present the tasks to be done, and then team moves them across the Scrum board as they complete them one by one. Another way uh, to make the work visible is to create a burndown chart. On one axis is the number of points the team entered into the sprint, and on the other is the number of days. So every day the Scrum Master adds up a complete points and plots them on the burndown chart. Ideally, the graph will have a steep drop to the zero remaining points and the last day of the sprint. Uh, step number eight is a um, daily stand-up meeting or daily scrum. So this is the heartbeat of scrum, and every day at the same time, not exceeding 15 minutes, the team and scrum master meets and answers three questions, which are, by the way, not essential by, by the scrum guide, but I still find them very useful. So those questions are, what did you do yesterday to help the team finish the sprint? What will you do today to help the finished sprint? And is there any obstacle preventing you or the whole team from achieving the sprint goal? Okay, and that's it. That's the whole meeting. If that if if it lasts longer than 15 minutes, you're not organizing it well. This helps the whole team to know exactly where they are in the sprint. We're all, will all tasks be completed on time? Is there any opportunity for other team members to help overcome obstacles? Tasks are not assigned from higher instances. That's very important. The team is independent. They do this alone. And there is no detailed reporting on management. So the Scrum Master is responsible for removing obstacles or hindering the circumstances for the team's progress. Okay? So the step number nine is a review your work in the sprint review meeting. And this, this is a sprint review or a, let's call it sprint demo or demonstration. And this is a meeting where the team shows what they achieved during the sprint. Everyone can attend, not just the product owner, scrum master and the team, but also the stakeholders, management, clients, anyone. And this is an open meeting where the team demonstrates what they will complete during the sprint. The team should demonstrate only what meets the definition of done, what they have accomplished, what is entirely finished and can be delivered without any further work. If may not be a finished product, but it should be a finished unit. Okay. Let's move to the step number 10. Analyze what went well in the sprint retrospective. So after the team shows what they achieved during the previous sprint in the meeting called sprint review, the things that are done and that can be potentially be delivered to the clients for feedback, they sit down and think about what went well, what should or what could have been better and what can be done better in the next sprint. What process improvements can, can they as a team immediately apply? So, to be effective, this meeting requires a certain level of emotional maturity and atmosphere of trust. So, the key thing to remember is not to blame anyone, but to look at the process. Why did it happen this way? Why did we miss this? What could make us faster? People, as a team, must take responsibility for their process and outcomes, seeking solutions as a team. At the same time, people must have the courage to express what troubles them in the problem-solving manner, not blaming. The rest of the team must be mature enough to listen to feedback, adopt it, and find a solution rather than seeking excuses. And by the end of this meeting, the team and the Scrum Master should agree on the process improvement to apply it in the next sprint. This process improvement, sometimes called Kaizen, should be included in the top priority list for the next sprint with acceptance tests. And this way, the team can easily see if they can have, uh, if they have actually implemented the improvement and what effect it had on the speed of work. And 
Final step, step number 11, last but not least, <laughs> we immediately dive into the next sprint cycle. Armed with the experience, lessons learned, and hunger for improvements, okay? It's like a never-ending journey of growth and success. There you have it, folks. The 11 steps of successful Scrum implementation. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more epic content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss out on the latest insights. Until the next time, keep scrumming and keep succeeding. This is Dan Mikic, and I will see you in the next week. Goodbye. Oh, no, no, no.